Hey, uh, welcome yeah. back to Morning hey, Show and uh, the Democratic Hour of Power. Now Let's stop go it. right now to Capitol Hill and talk to a Republican Senator from Pennsylvania. We have a Republican. Senator yeah. Pat Toomey. And Senator, I'd like to thank you for coming on the Democratic Hour of Power and being the first, <laughs> actually the first politician since 1978 to appear on this show that actually has voted for a Republican in a presidential contest. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Good to talk to you guys. Now, you were bringing up, well, let's first of all, let's, when you got one senator, Saying another senator's lost his mind. Well, you gotta yeah. you gotta ask a, a third senator Come on what now. he thinks about <laughs> that. So uh. so you do understand what Claire McCaskill's saying. I, uh, Mitch McConnell thinks I'm going to vote to raise the debt ceiling three times before my next election in Missouri. Uh, that that ain't going to happen, is it? Oh, I don't know uh, whether or not that's going to happen. But uh, Joe, you know what I've been worried about from the beginning of this discussion is that Washington will do what Washington usually does, yep. which is uh, you know, avoid the tough decisions and just go ahead and raise the debt limit. Maybe there'll be a fig leaf of cover for people, but there'll be no real substantive change in the direction, our fiscal direction, and I won't be a part of that. I am, I'm worried that uh, we're increasingly heading in that direction. I'm very worried about it, and I was worried when Mitch, Con Mitch McConnell talked about the deal that he made yesterday. I think the worst case scenario the absolute nightmare scenario, if you don't mind me associating myself with you, we've been doing this for a very long time. We did it in the House, you're doing it now in the Senate. But for those of us who've been concerned about the national debt for decades, right, right. the worst case scenario is getting this debt ceiling passed without significant cuts. That's exactly right, and I am increasingly worried that that's exactly where we're heading. The, we're, we're living on borrowed time, if you ask me, fiscally. We are in a much worse position now than we were in the mid-90s. The actual debt is much larger. The annual deficits are much bigger. The unfunded liabilities of the entitlements are much, much bigger. We have seen how this plays out in Europe. We are not that far behind, and that's why I think this is our moment to do something serious. And, and one of the problems that I fault Republicans for is not having articulated what the circumstances under which we are willing to raise the debt limit. And that's why a group of us have done exactly that, Mike Lee from Utah and myself and others. We've said, Mr. President, we'll give you the full debt limit increase that you've asked for if you will agree to put us on a path to a balanced budget. I don't think that's so unreasonable. President Bill Clinton and Republicans in Congress agreed to do that, and in fact did that. You were part of that, Joe, back in the 90s. Uh, as recently as 2007, we were, we were only 1.2% of GDP away from having a balanced budget. So why shouldn't that be the goal? Let's get on a path to a balance. Well, and, and, and my feeling is, and we've had this frustration on the show, uh, we have been asking now for two years, three years, people that come on this show, Okay, we can't balance the budget now. We understand the economy's bad. You don't want to slash and burn during a recession. How long? Five years? Seven years? Yeah. Ten yeah. years? Give me a 15-year right. plan to balance a budget, and yeah. that's a starting point. But nobody, and by the way, that was the big debate back in 1995. Bill that, Clinton well, said, we'll balance a budget in 10, 11, 12 years. Republicans right. said seven. There is exactly no right. talk of that now, Pat. Well, uh, no, that's not true. I introduced a budget you. that brings us Other to balance within nine years. Well, I'm not alone. You know, I got okay. almost every Republican to vote for my budget. We have this ca cut, cap, and balance plan, which is all about bringing us to balance within 10 years. It doesn't happen overnight. I wish we could do it faster. I don't think we can do it much faster than no. seven, eight, nine years. But by all means, let's have that debate. But let's agree on the premise that we can't keep running up this, these debts. So let, let's what, talk about these numbers. About. Let's talk about these numbers. We've got to put this in perspective. These numbers, by the way, come from Steve, Steve Ratner, uh, who was just here an hour or two ago. Um, I don't think he's voted for a lot of Republicans in his life, but uh, we agree. Steve and I agree. Uh, and I'm sure you would too. Look at these charts that Steve Ratner are all describing to you. The first is yeah. total outstanding debt, uh, $13.6 trillion. Now, as Steve Ratner said, that's bad enough. But then you start looking at the unfunded liabilities right. that you and I have talked about for a very long time. Right. Unfunded Medicare liability, $35 trillion. And right. then you look at our total obligations. This is the number. This is a takeaway number that Americans don't understand, that they need to understand. We have total obligations over the next generation of $54 mm. trillion. I'm going to say it again, $54 trillion. And right now, Washington can't come to a deal to cut $2 trillion off of the I, national debt. $54 trillion. What does that mean to us as a country over the next, genera over the next generation? 
Well, first, some think it's considerably larger than that, but let's mm. say that's the number. That's four times our entire annual economic output. It's completely unsustainable. Uh, Greece got where it got to with debt of 150% of their annual economic output. Uh, so we, this is why I say this is urgent. Okay, we're, it's urgent. We're operating on borrowed time. We're and, operating and, on borrowed time. Yeah. And it's already having a negative impact on the economy. I believe that the obvious threat of higher interest rates, higher taxes, higher inflation that is implicit in these huge deficits is, is preventing the kind of job growth that we could be having otherwise already. All okay. right, Sen Senator Toomey, Mika, who of course is, runs the Democratic Hour of Power, has <laughs> hives breaking yeah. out now because I can, we're actually sure. having a Republican speak and finish no. sentences Listen. on this show. So go <laughs> ahead, Mika. No, we will now turn it over to you. We, I was trying to wrap him up politely. Well, of course, because um, because a Republican's talking. <laughs> no. Because a Republican's talking. Oh no! That doesn't happen very oh, often no. on this show. Um, you should have seen me with Hellman at the top of the six. Could not make it happen, but okay. I tried. Go ahead. All right, so um, Senator, uh, yes. obviously the economy. And obviously, one thing that would help this economy is just some clarity on this. Is to move That's forward, true. right? To right. get it. We are at the eleventh hour. It's not going to be perfect, and you know what? It's not. Even going to scratch the surface. Having said that, uh, are your colleagues, are your Republican colleagues being difficult at the negotiating table? Are they giving nothing? What are they giving? What are they giving? Um, look at what we gave. I, I mean, I, do, I you, do you I, think? Well, let me let me. Can he did, answer did, your did question? You think, yeah, please. <laughs> um, did did do you really think that the vote on the Paul Ryan Republican budget was an easy vote for Republicans? Didn't play out so well in New York. Oh, we brought it over here because Harry Reid, rather than offering his own budget, cynically said. I'll just make you guys vote on his. And we did, and the vast majority of us voted for it because it does put us on a sustainable path. And that was not an easy vote. Uh, we see no plan from the Senate Democrats. The president offered a plan, and the Senate Democrats gave him zero votes for it. Obviously, not a serious plan, and he has not proposed an alternative. Mike Lee and I have introduced a plan that gets us to a balanced budget. You can argue about how we do it. We welcome that argument. But we're trying, and I don't see the comparable effort from the so other side. So what is the Senate? This, the Democrats are running the Senate, and right. if they've got a Senate budget chairman that I've got great respect for. But yeah. I, don't, I don't see a Senate budget. When is it coming out? There, so Harry Reid has told us they're not going to do a budget. Why? Never mind, because they, he doesn't want to have his guys have to cast tough votes okay, and lay out a blueprint for what they believe in. We're at the 11th hour on these negotiations happening right. at the White House. Another one, a fifth one happening today. The president right. has right. given on entitlement reform. He's given on a number of issues. Well, well, wait, wait, Where what, have what, the what Republicans did he give? given? What, I got what it, I got it, Micah, what did he give? What did he give he's, on entitlement reform? You know reform? what? He's put it on the table. What, what, he's what, put it on the what table. Is, what is he put on the table? on the table? In terms of tax I, reform, closing I, the I, loopholes, I, anything, I, anything? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I've put a series of cuts. I've laid out exactly how much I think we should spend next year. I've put statutory caps on the table. We've proposed a specific balanced budget and suggested we take a different version. The president hasn't even given us a budget. We hear about entitlement reforms, but mm -hmm. what are the reforms? Here's one of the problems. We've got five guys in a room behind closed doors. Who knows what they're talking about? This should be done out in the open. We ought to have a budget. We ought to have votes on the Senate floor. We have a, uh, ought I to have a debate. And, 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 and by the way, hold on a second, Megan. Let's be, let's be very clear here about what he said. Okay. Okay. So we've got five people behind closed doors mm -hmm. negotiating. Yeah. They can't even tell us who stormed out of the room yesterday. Let's look at who's put budgets on the floor and who's voted on budgets. The Republicans right. run the House of Representatives. They put a budget on the floor. The first time anybody seriously approached Medicare and they voted on it. Let me finish. The Democrats Democrats run the United States Senate. They will not put an actual budget on the floor. The president has, again, the president is not coming forward with another budget. So when the president says he's going to put Medicare and Social Security on the table, yes, we salute him That's for saying again. he's going to put it on the table, but he's done. I've, I've seen no specifics. You've seen no specifics. Nobody's seen specifics. It's just words. The Democrats have had. How long have you guys no, been it's in not session? Just words. How and, long and, and, has and, the Senate been in session this year without a budget? 
well, six months this year, but two years prior to that. It, they didn't do a budget last year. So this has gone on for a long time. Let me make another important point here. You know, when the president talks about being willing to consider Medicare and Social Security, that's not like that's a unilateral concession on his part. That's a tough thing for Republicans to do as well, and Republicans have already done it. They passed the budget in the House, and most of us voted for it in the Senate. So we've demonstrated a willingness okay. to take some tough positions. It's Senator right. Pat Toomey, I want to thank you no for way. coming on the Democratic Hour of Power. <laughs> I'm, and now back, I'm happy to be there. And now back to our regular programming. Mika, okay. what Democrat is next? All right, no, I'd like to continue with Senator Pat Toomey. I have another question for him to follow up. Are you going to ask him if we're finally okay. going to pass a balanced budget Let amendment, me just ask which we him tried to pass question. in 1995? Well, Don't answer a question, mm, just answer mine. The president mine. himself has put things on the table that go what? directly against his base and are politically dangerous for him. What He's the, done it. What are the specifics? Be quiet What, what are the specifics? Second. You know what? He'll give specifics when the Republicans even come to the actually, table actually, with something. They already okay? have given specifics on the Paul Ryan Medicare plan, which was political suicide for a lot of Republicans. They took that hard vote. What hard vote have Democrats made on the debt over the past year? I think Name one. I think they're Name trying to hammer it out Name right now. Name one vote. On the they meeting. had what a else? year. Oh, These are please. all words. Name one tough vote. Anybody at the table? You're trying to Name, cover no, for hold on, a party hold on, hold on, hold on. that cares more I about want itself somebody, than the country. No, no, quit filibustering. I want to get somebody at this table. Name one tough vote Democrats have made this year on the debt. I think you're deflecting. I think you're, oh, you deflecting. So you can't. you're deflecting from you this. You can't. You're deflecting the Democrats from this have had a year. You can't you want, answer that you question. You have the Republicans standing <laughs> on the center of the question. table. <laughs> you and standing on the center of the table and wanting to make up the difference all on the on the, on you know, Charles, the Republicans standing on the table it's and right want to make up the say, Democratic side. I don't side. have an answer. No, no, no sometimes it's fine. No, no, no. See, this is this is classic. Just one vote. This is classic. Just one vote, Charles. This is classic Republicans circling back. And trying to pull in everything else that's not in these negotiations. John give me one vote. And that is wrong. Can you name one vote That's the wrong. Democrats have made this year on the debt? Just one. I just want one vote, and then I'll say I'm, I'm wrong. Nope. You can't do it, can you? Nope. They haven't put a budget out. Nope. And by the way, this discussion is never had in mainstream media. I, I just and they have it all year. I, I, all I'll say, though, is that I'm not sure that the vote on the, on the Ryan budget, though it had turned out to be... Uh, a political albatross for them. I'm not sure it really qualifies as a tough vote. Yeah. I mean, the, I, the, 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 the right. If you're the, a the senator right. in Pennsylvania, like Pat let, Toomey, let talk, and yeah. you vote for a Paul Ryan uh, <laughs> Medicare deal, then I wouldn't have voted for it, probably. <laughs> that uh, is a dangerous you, vote. It, it, the Republican well, House, Republican just House members Nancy Pelosi. voted for the, for the Ryan budget. No, <laughs> well, the, you just asked Nancy Pelosi. She's been celebrating that vote since it was cast. Of course it was a tough vote. All right, Senator. And, and by the way, nice Democrats immediately started demagoguing that, mm -hmm. saying exactly. Republicans were going to end Medicare. Well, they were. It was true. What are you talking oh. Is that I'm not so true? I'm so sorry yeah, I right. filibustered you gentlemen. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> And we'll now back right to back. the Democratic <laughs> Hour of Power after these messages. <laughs>